Hi, Mina Bryant here from theoryandprofit.com. That's theoryandprofit.com. And we're continuing with our crafting your success mindset. And in the previous video, we had five questions that you wanted to begin asking yourself so that you can be honest with yourself and get really good answers from yourself to reach into and step into the success that you want for your life. In this video, we're going to talk about three questions that actually stop your success in its tracks. And these questions take your power away. They actually give your power to someone else. And if you're directing these th three questions to another person, you are trying to take their power away from them. And the first of these questions is about finding fault. Whose fault is it? Who do I blame? Who did this thing? You know, and we want to know who or what because we want to be able to lay whatever we're feeling at that person's feet. We, you know, if they're making us, if, if, if what they've done made us angry, we want to put our anger at their feet. We want to say that they caused our anger, which is not true because if they caused our anger, that anger would be triggered in everyone who encounters that situation. So that is really about you. Your anger is about you. You're seeing something, you dislike it, it creates anger, it creates fear, it creates apprehension, um, it creates frustration or irritation or lack of appreciation, whatever it creates for you, that is about you. And there's no reason that you have to think that the person who did this is the reason that you feel what you feel. Because typically, it's not. And I know that sounds really strange, and I think I'll talk more about that in a different video. But what you really want is to have the problem solved. What you really want is to take those emotions and create a solution or a fix for the problem and you want to be able to gain the trust of anyone else that's involved instead of blaming someone take them into your you know take them into your confidence and say there are different ways to handle this thing just because there are um, and you want to be honest and you want to own your own actions and emotions in a situation like that and what you want is for the other person to own their actions and their emotions in a situation like that but you don't get that by placing blame and finding fault and the only things that you get from that is lack of trust you know you get um, you you damage whatever relationship you do have and you try to make somebody else the bad guy so now when they see you of course they're not going to be open with you they're not going to trust you they're not going to readily believe what you say or what you do or how you think even uh, so let's stop finding fault let's stop trying to lay blame which leads us into the next question is trying to change others you know how do I make this other person do this thing the way I want them to do it or make this other person be the way that I think that they need to be well you know you don't that's just it you don't the only person that you have been given the right the ability and the capacity to change is you that's it there is nothing else that you can do about that other person you can hope and you can pray and you can plead and you can beg for them to make changes in their life and you can manipulate them through force and punishment and reward or strength of will I'm sorry strength of will or gunpoint even to do something but if they're not doing it of their own accord if they don't have a why that makes them want to do it you're just barking up you know you're barking up a tree that's dead and has nothing in it basically so um, and you know women we are known for this we want to change our boyfriends um, or we try to get our kids to act a certain way and there's nothing wrong with teaching someone how you'd like them to act you know teaching them how 
you like to be pleased what pleases you you know I mean there's nothing wrong with that but you're not going to change someone into the person that you think that they should be you can change yourself you can learn what makes you happy and make changes for yourself and I know it doesn't feel like it's fair that you have to do this work when if only they would do something different, you would be so much better. But when you don't do the work to make yourself better, guess what? Someone else holds your happiness in their hands. And do you really want that? I don't think so. And you certainly don't reach success that way. And yes, I learned that from experience. Uh, So that leads us into the third and final question, measuring yourself against others. What is wrong with me? Will I ever be good enough, as good as, you know, such and such and so and so? You know, you may be and you may not be. What you have actually is you have your own knowledge, you have your mindset, your attitudes, your emotions and your actions. You can work with what you've got. You've got everything that you need to be as good as you need to be. You can't measure yourself against others because they're coming from a completely different background. They may have different knowledge. They may have a completely different mindset. They have their own attitudes and their own emotions that they're dealing with. You know, they may have support behind them that you don't currently have. So trying to compare yourself to to where they are now versus where you are now isn't going to get you anywhere. And when you start feeling this way, at least when I start feeling this way, one of the things that I tend to do is I go out and assist someone else. And it doesn't matter who that someone else is. And I typically do it anonymously. A lot of times it's, you know, little things online. I'll see something on their site and I'm like, oh, that's an easy quick fix. Especially if I'm feeling, you know, like, oh my gosh, I want to be so much, I want to be like this, I'm not good enough yet. If I'm feeling like that, I will go do something for someone or give them a little snippet of code or give them a little uh, direction as to, I see that you were trying to do X and you were trying to do it using, you know, A, B, and, and Z. Instead, use this and it works. And I have no problem doing that and it helps me feel better and know that I'm good enough to help other people and I'm good enough as I am. So there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with where you are right now. There's nothing wrong with um, with what you're doing. You know, you're basing it probably on an assumption that you need to be somewhere that you're not because that's where this other person is. And there's no reason to do that. There's no reason to, to be there. And especially if it's going to take you down that road of self-doubt because that is a road... That is not fun to go down. And yeah, you know, it happens for everyone. Uh, I'm sure that everyone has some areas that they doubt their abilities in. And there's nothing wrong with doubting your abilities in an area. But when, again, when you start to have that self-doubt, do something in that area that you know that you're capable of doing. And do it well. And you will find that that self-doubt goes away and it gives you the power to begin accomplishing larger tasks in that same area. Uh, So those are the three things that I have today that will stop your success in its tracks. And they are questions that probably pop up into your head. You don't even have to think about them. They just show up there all the time in different guises. And they stop you. They sap your power away. So let's stop asking ourselves those questions and instead start asking ourselves empowering questions that actually help us live the successful life we've defined for us. And again, this is Mina Bryant. Uh, My website is theoryandprofit.com. And I hope this has been helpful for you as it's been for me.